welcome. We well, thank you, Mr. Templeman, for joining us today on A Place Called Through. A Place Called Through is a place where individuals are surely welcome to share their testimony about faith, hope, and God's love. Today, your host, Patricia Goings, who I am, I am the author of also a book called Willpower, The Call to Rise Above. This book tells you about my pain, the bitterness, the hurt, the sorrow that I have endured in hopes to empower you and others to this place called through. I am broadcasting from WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. We are a nonprofit Christian faith organization. Of course, we do accept donations and we do appreciate your donations as they do help us to further the ministry. Today, again, I, I do thank you, Mr. Templeman, for being my honored guest. And today we are having this privilege to have you share your story about your new walk in Christ. Again, I do welcome you to this broadcast. Thank you so much for that welcome. And um, I'm giving my testimony from Wales in the UK. Um, huh. I'll start, shall I start from my years previous to becoming a Christian, some 50 years ago? Yes, if you could kind of highlight us from where you were to where you are now in your new walk in Christ, and we'll be kind of segueing in between. That would be okay. awesome. Okay. Um, okay, I was, a, I was a successful builder in the, in the UK, and I was building us another new house for us to live into. We were 26 years of age. Uh, I know at, at that time we had new cars, we had a truck, we had a business, thriving business. My wife had a good job. I'd known my wife since she was six years old. She'd been a Christian for about eight years, been praying for me, but I was not interested at all. I was more into the materialistic world, which I needed to, to be able to be successful. However, I found that in those coming years when I was successful, I was having a lot of spare time in which to fill my other pleasures. And so I started going out with, a family member and some other businessmen and we would go and watch fights, boxing fights and, and get back home at four in the morning. We would go to restaurants and drink too much. And I once, once got back indoors at seven in the morning and this was the way we were carrying on. Too much money, too much time on our hands and we were going downhill. And I say we because all three of us were going downhill fast. And it's surprising where that was leading me to, somewhere which I would never have dreamt I would be. And I did something that was out, that was unacceptable in our marriage. So what I did, I actually turned stone hard to my wife. Uh, I'd known her since I was six years of age, but suddenly I had this decision and I turned st stone hard to my wife. This was very upsetting for her because she didn't understand why. In the end, she left after about two weeks, she left home and she took my son with her and they went to London where she was privileged to get a job straight away. And I wanted a quickie divorce. That's how it was rolling fast. So you were more in tune with what the world was offering you because you were not a born again Christian, but your yeah. wife was already there. That's right. I did. It, there was nothing there that I... I actually had this uh, preconceived idea that all Christians needed a prop. They needed something, but I got everything. I didn't need anything at all. And that was because you didn't see the light at that time. You only saw the darkness of the world. I had, I had definitely not seen the light, and I was going down into the darkness quicker than, than I could keep up with. But then, uh, had your, I'm sorry to have had your relationship with that same woman from, I mean, from childhood. And she was praying for you all the while. My wife was praying for me all the while, but it meant it would, didn't appear to have any effect on myself. Not at all. No. So then something, um, something happened, which was quite out of the norm. Um, I was with this uh, other person one evening and I, we were talking and then I heard a voice. And this voice said, phone your wife. And I said to this person, did you hear that? She said, no, what? I said, I've just heard a voice, phone your wife. I said, I, that sounds as though that was from God. 
but I don't know God. So I said, I must phone my wife. So I, I picked up, the, I went down the road and I phoned my wife and she was thrilled. But I said, but I'd like, to, I'd like to come and see you at the weekend, the following weekend. So she said, uh, that would be wonderful, come whenever you want. So I went down there and I learned that from my wife that she'd be, she was thrilled to see me, but there was a little church and the people in the church have been praying for me with my wife all the time. So this was, and my little son, who was six at the time, he said, dad is not thinking right. He will come, he will come round. And that happens so, because you heard a voice that nobody else had heard before and they didn't recognize where the voice was coming from. So I can imagine it must have been very challenging for you to describe this voice um, to even now your wife and other family members and even those closest to you, particularly those that you were associating yourself with. So this voice that you heard was something with deep within you that penetrated you to this point that you knew you had to make a change. It, it suddenly turned my life around, but I didn't realize what was going to happen within the next seven days. What happened within the next, the preceding, the next seven days was one thing after another confirmation of, of what God was going to do in my life. And I had no idea of that at all until those things happened. It was amazing. Um, my wife, at the end of that meeting with my wife, when I saw her, she gave me a book called I Believe in Miracles by Catherine Corman. And my uh, sister-in-law, she gave me a Bible. And in that Bible, there was Psalm 32, verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgressions have been forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now, you can imagine, I put the Bible and the book in the front of my new car. And I went back because I still wasn't a Christian. But then what happened was uh, I arranged to meet my wife the following Thursday, September the 9th. And I drove in my, I was a bit late for the meet. I was going to go to London. So I was a bit late. So I started to drive very fast. And this is where the miracles start. I was overtaking a full line of traffic because I'm in my normal flamboyant self. I was taking a full line of traffic when I came to a slight brow of a hill. When I got to the top, there was a whole line of traffic in front of me and coming up fast. Well, I, I had, you have seconds to, to, do, to know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I turned the wheel into the left and braked hard. But my rear engine car, the engine started to come around. So I then, but I didn't hit a car. And yet I'd gone into the line of traffic. I then turned to the right and I'm now right in line with the traffic. So then I, braked. I then braked again, turned into the left, not hit in a car. I hit the bank. The car rolled over and over and over. And as it went over, I held on to the bottom of the seat of the car. I don't know why, but I held on to the bottom of the seat of the car. After about three or four seconds, there's silence. I'm upside down in a ditch, but 200 meters upside down. And I crawled out from the wreck, which was squashed further down than the back of the seats. So had I been sitting upright, I'd have been gone. I got out and as I crawled out on the road was I Believe in Miracles and the Bible. I then was elated. I didn't know why. But I was elated. I was dancing around. And then the police and the ambulances came. They're looking for the injured. There was no injured. And I hadn't hit anybody. So I praise the Lord. I didn't know what I was getting into. But I then knew God was with me at that point. And that's how he works. You don't always have to know how he's going to work it out. But he does work it out. And he was already seeing this coming to you. But he dispatched his angels, thank God that he did, and they encamped around you that you were not hurt. And so that's why today I can imagine that you have nothing but praise in you because this will help inspire someone else who may be going through something as well. And that truly is a blessing that can only come from yes. God. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. And, of course, as we moved 
as we moved on from that blessing, um, everything worked out fine with my wife and I actually shared Jesus with the person I was talking with for about five or six, six weeks. I shared Jesus with that person within a week. But then oh thing, things happened in our lives. It just went on and on. My mother, who was, uh, when I told my mother, I did it, I, this, I spoke with my wife and I accepted Jesus Christ as my saviour and I repented of my sins. Amen. And from then on, I bumped into an old friend who took me to uh, a wonderful church, Mount Zion in Norwich, where we used to have the Māori Thark family come in from America. And there I saw the reality of people being saved, people being healed, people being born again it, in a church service, which I oh. my eyes were opened. Mm. And I was soaking it up like a sponge. So I told my mother, who was 68 years of age, Mum, I'm born again. Well, my mother said to me, well, I sent you to church when you were up to you were 12. So what do you mean? So I shared this with my mother mm -hmm. and she said, oh, what's the difference? So I said, well, you have to repent to be born again, accept Jesus Christ to take over your life. First order so repentance. She, so she did that and she became a born again Christian. Thank God. But then, then the miracles start happening again. My wife was, my mother was coming to church with us in this really live church. And one at the end of most sermons, the pastor used to give an altar call for healing, salvation. It was a very lively church full of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise, my mother got up with her Zimmer frame because she was a registered invalid. She used to go to sleep with plaster casts on her hands oh my. and handmade shoes for her feet. Wow. So there, therefore, so she made her way with her Zimmer frame to the front of the church and the pastor came along and he got to my mother and he put his hand on her head and he said, what do you want Jesus to do for you today, my dear? Mm. My dear old mother, well, I suppose I want Jesus to heal me. Praise God. Thank so he God. said, so he said, well, you won't need this anymore. And he took my mother's Zimmer frame away. And I'm looking, standing behind my mother thinking, oh, <laughs> I don't mind praying for somebody else, but this is now my mother. Mm -hmm. Then he prayed with her and she slumped down into her seat. The healing took place. Oof. When, when uh, the pastor came back to her, how do you feel, my dear? And she stood up. She said that was I was tingling from my head to my toes. She said very similar a feeling to the anesthetics that I'd had when she'd had several operations in her life. Mm -hmm. So he said, well, now go and walk to the doors where you came into the church. It's about 20, 20 meters and come back. So my mother walked to the doors and she came back to her seat. And you know, our prayer was that my mother would dance and clap in that Mount Zion church. And the following week she was dancing and clapping and she hadn't been able to wash her hair for four years or load her tin tub washing machine. And now she's walking without her Zimmer frame. That's well, the that first is, miracle. That is the wonders of God and only God can do something like that. And we're thankful to him for, for that healing. And yes. so the impact on your family in the, in the miracle process and the newness to Christ has been what? The, the effect on our family, my, at, uh, I became involved with the FGB for gospel businessmen. And now I was a speaker or I was a president or whatever. And one day we were having a meal and we had a good speaker for, it might have been from America, a good speaker. And we got to the, and I invited our son. He came along and he brought, uh, because our son was a, uh, a graduate at university. And he's a very clever boy. And he brought along another guy, a young boy who was at Sandhurst, which is a very, very good university or place to go to, you know. And the, boy, the boys sat together and we had our meal. And then we got to the call at the end. 
and it, eyes down and prayer and the man said if god has been speaking to you come out to the front get up come out to the front <laughs> and my boy told me afterwards he said to god well if he gets up meaning the boy next to me i'm getting up mm -hmm. and at that moment a lady came and put their ha her hand on his shoulder and my son got up and so did the other boy and they went to the front and our son who was always good was crying and laughing somewhere that was then the beginning of the family being safe his his wife was a christian the grandchildren uh, became christians and god is was moving in our lives on a permanent basis which well, is you wonderful. See, from your point of weakness i would say to how god has moved miraculously throughout your life and as well as your family so that testimony can show others too. just be encouraged that we still have to have hope and we've got to have belief. And I noted that earlier you said about repentance and I do too will share with you that repentance is vital to your salvation. Um, and that goes for all of us. Unless we repent, we will not be born again. And so from your mom to your wife, to your son, and even their friends, this newness in Christ seems to be spreading amongst those who you're in contact with. Well, we moved to the south of France. I built us a nice house in Montpellier, and there became a Billy Graham relay. So we put posters up in the village, and there was not a, a good response. However, uh, our next door neighbors, oh, well, at the back on a plot, a nice house, uh, my wife invited them to come with us. And they were Catholics and they, they said, yes, they come along. And we learned a lot from that. They came along to Gange where we could see the televised relay. And on the second night, they knocked on our door and said, oh, are you going again? Um, we said, yes. They said, well, can we come with you? And on the third night, they became born again Christians. And we shared some wonderful times with them because they had not had the access to read the bible thoroughly and wow. compare it with what we were talking about and it was a wonderful revelation to them and that's 30 30 years ago and we're still in contact with them they became born again christians and that stayed with them and, and that's our awesome. god began to move with us so i had a, a vision then to have a marquee so uh, with an outreach and i i I invited some pastors. However, I did say that I would prefer if they did not read and preach, but could they give living testimonies of how God mm -hmm. came into their lives? And so we had 200. So I needed a field with electric and water and a marquee. Wow. On a campsite owner said, Well, you can have my field for nothing and we'll lay on the electric. God the still working miracles. Oh, in the big church in Montpellier, they gave us 200 seats. So we got the 200 seats. We had the pastors and my brother-in-law, who was a pastor, to come along and give us just testimonies that we serve a living God, not just one of the Bible, but he's the uh -huh. God, the same yesterday, today, yeah. and for eternity. Yeah. So that's, that's what was happening, and it's ongoing. It's ongoing. It's in our business. I could tell you one or two things where a God has took hold of my business when it was just going the wrong way and he's guided me right into the right direction. And so because now you, you have this new walk in Christ, you also have built strength, you have more belief, your faith is stronger. How would you take that message to share to someone who may have gone through or is going through where you used to be to get to where you are now? well i'm a very practical person that's why i've always been an, a builder building houses etc creating things really mm -hmm. um and god had to hit me on the head with a hammer how would i bring that to somebody i would i would stress that god is real he is living he's interested in our lives and i would i would suggest to anybody that even if you're in business god is, is interested in your business he's interested in your family he wants to come into your life and i believe that 
the only way I think is to take that step of faith take that step in of faith and ask Jesus to come into your life even if you don't want to go to church take that step of faith and ask Jesus to come into your life and I'm sure you'll come in and let's just say we'll just use for an example if you were to meet someone and you give that information to them and they're they're not a believer and they say I don't know anything about Jesus I don't want to hear this I don't want your Bible I don't believe what you're saying how would you further try to encourage them to 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 join this newness in Christ what would you really tell them that could make the difference for them to become a believer because a lot of times people are hear our testimonies about what we went through and how we endured and how we got to where we are but they still don't believe this jesus they don't believe in the, the word of god so what would you do that would have significant impact to change their mind of thinking okay if i've if i've already shared bits and pieces like that as i said i think i would i would go again and i would share a, an indisputable miracle again if it was a business person i would say at one time i was i was in the drinks industry i made my own business and i was exporting alcohol and beer to different countries we had an opportunity to export into russia this could have been a lucrative market however we weren't sure and we were praying about whether to take that move we went to an outreach in newport in wales 3,000 people, nowhere to sit. I'm looking everywhere. I went and found a place in a seat. My, ma my wife was somewhere else. She was sitting somewhere else. I sat down. We went through the whole meeting. And then I got to the end of the meeting. And I said to this guy next to me, where are you from? He said, well, I've just come from Russia. I said, you've just <laughs> come from Russia. What did you do? He said, I was in business. I had a packing business there. Oh. I said, because I'm praying about exporting liquor, alcohol, into Russia. And he said to me, I wouldn't do that if you're a Christian. And I said, well, the, the, if you could work out the probabilities of sitting next to someone who'd lived in Russia with 3,000 people who could give me that advice as a Christian, I, will, I thank God that God is on our case, even in our businesses. Well, I think with that, you know they would have to have some kind of belief in hope um because you sure have a miraculous story and we're about to wrap this up and i'd love to continue to hear more about you and look forward to hopefully getting back with you but if you want to give us like a let's talk about a recap of where you were and where you are now um in your miracles and the things that you're anticipating god to do very briefly if you would share that with us where you are now um, then we're going to go ahead and recap it and if you would if you want to close us out with a prayer um, Shortly, we'll give you the indication to do that. I Would say that Jesus makes the difference in my life and my family's life and I would not want to be uh, without Jesus in, in my life speaking to me daily Guiding us through trials through illnesses through cancer. I won't go into that through everything the ups and downs of life i would not wish to live my life without jesus and i thank god for the day that jesus came into my life yes we're so thankful because we couldn't make it without him well we certainly would no. want to thank you for being our guest with us today on a place called through broadcasting from wytv christian broadcaster networks we do accept donations and that helps us to get the word out such as your word and other individuals I am Patricia Goings, and I am the host of A Place Called Through. I invite you again, as we've previously stated, to be my guest again, and we want to help you to share this message with other people. That is part of why we ask for the donations. It has been truly, truly a blessing for me to speak with you today. Um, again, A Place Called Through, you can find me at www.willpower. Uh, yola.com i forgot my own website you can also email me at p goings wp at gmail.com 
And of course, you can reach me through the WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network.org. Again, I thank you so, so very much from the bottom of my heart. I pray much for your continued walk in blessings that are upon your life to be with many others. Again, we invite you to share this with other people so that they too, if they're going to this place called through, which is a destiny, it's a faith walk. We cordially invite you to do so. It has been an honor. I look forward to speaking with you again. God bless you and your family. Continued blessings in the newness of Christ. God bless you. Thank you so much, Patricia. God bless you and the work you're doing. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. You. Bye bye. Ah, uh, ah. Uh.